Kia ora, Anaru here for Combat Sports New Zealand. Tonight's interview is with Ev E.T. Ting, who fights out of Auckland MMA but is currently uh, training at Saigon Sports Club in Vietnam. He's also coaching there, so we found out a lot about what happens over there, his lifestyle, find out what he does when he's not smashing people's faces in. We talk about the UFC, we talk about PEDs. Um, but the most exciting thing, I guess, is his newest fight is next month, uh, September, in Kuala Lumpur. He's headlining against Rob Lasida, an Aussie MMA legend. Um, it's a huge fight for Ev, and I was really excited to get this interview. Uh, we wish him all the best, as always, and um, thanks for watching. Kia ora, everyone. My name's Anaru, and I'm joined by the big boss man, Ev Ting himself. How are you doing, Ev? What's up, Anaru? Thank you for having me. I'm good, thank you. No worries, bro. Are you um, copying my fashion there, bro? What's going on? Oh, uh, man, you know, we've got <laughs> to hold it down. We're representing. <laughs> mean, mean. Um, happy birthday for yesterday. Or was it yesterday, yeah? Yeah, it was yesterday, 11th of August. Yeah, well, thank you. It was, it was a good day. Yeah, bro. Very what relaxing. Does, um, what, well, I was going to say, what do you do when you're a professional fighter? It's obviously you don't go out and get smashed and do... 20 something shots anymore you know what, what, what do you get up to uh so in the morning we just went out for breakfast uh went to get a massage uh watched suicide squad i mean uh, and then and then at night met up with some friends and had some chicken wings yep. <laughs> so, so yeah so it was pretty chilled nothing nothing fancy but yeah good good night mean bro um what do you think of uh suicide squad i heard mixed reviews so far um, all the scenes and all the action was, was full on. I mean, um, just the storyline was a little bit messy, I feel. But, like, I mean, if you're into action and all the funky stuff, then, then it's a good good movie for sure. But, um, yeah. Are you, are you into comic? Like, you read many comics back in the day or still? Or, or it's just a movie, action movie to you? Uh, just an action movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to delve in there, but never mind. Um, that sounds like a, yeah, pretty relaxing, pretty healthy way to celebrate your birthday. Um, can I ask how old, how old did you turn? Uh, 27 years today. 27 years young. Nice, bro. Yeah, um, that's a good way to celebrate, and you're all the way over in Saigon. Is that right? Uh, yes, I'm still in Saigon at the moment. Um, yeah, so we fin uh last two weeks, I'll be spending the camp in Malaysia, so we fly out tomorrow, and uh, yeah, it's all about peaking and feeling good now. Okay, bro, so yeah, so on that note, so you've you've been training, obviously, pretty much full-time for, for quite a while now? Uh, yeah, you could say pretty much for the whole last two years I've been training pretty much at least twice a day, yep. um, at six days a week. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we're always at the gym, so um, yeah, yeah, so yeah, we, we might as well get the work in. So yeah, pretty pretty much full time. I mean, cool. yeah, it is full time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and um, at Saigon Sports Club, and then like you just said, so you're you're doing the last two two weeks of camp. Um, we we just found out about that fight yesterday, I think, uh, against mm. Rob, uh, and apparently he called you out, and now he's going to get what he asked for. When did you find out about the fight, like realistically, and then how long have you had to prepare? Um, so I mean, I was quite sure that I'll be on a Malaysian card, um, but as for, for confirming the opponent, I've got maybe a good four weeks. Um, but but yeah, I mean, it was all. I mean, it was all planned, and we yep. all knew it was going to happen eventually. So um, here we are. So it's going to, it's about to go down. Mean, bro. And I saw the card today. Um, uh, I think Auckland MMA actually posted it up, and you're headlining, which is nice. Yeah. So this will be my second event that I'll be uh, headlining as the main event in Malaysia. Yeah. Um, it's good to have all my other teammates, um, a lot of uh, Malaysians on the card as well. Okay. Uh, soon, soon I hope I'll get a lot of um, New Zealanders on there as well. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, well, talking about the Kiwis, there's a couple from uh, Emma. I mean, uh, Cameron. Cameron was just fighting mm. over in Vegas. You, you probably saw him. And uh, yeah, I know Inna is doing quite well at the moment. 
Um, for sure. Yeah, yeah, that must be cool to watch those boys coming up, you know? Yeah, so Auckland MMA, man, we got some undercover beasts there, man. Like, um, we got Richie as well. We got John Bruin. Uh, we got some young, young guys coming up the ranks. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, 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 yeah, we're the underdogs, man. We don't talk much. We don't, we don't post much. But um, when yeah. it's time to, when it's time to perform, we perform in a cage, and that's uh, that's what we like to be judged on. Nice, yeah, yeah, silent assassin type, <laughs> kind of gym. Um, talking about Emma, um, Hamish, um, your coach, will he be mm. involved in in your camp for Rob somehow? Or? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm always uh, communicating, corresponding with Hamish. Um, yep. We always chat. Um, and like for all my other fights, Hamish will be in my corner. And Hamish will be in my corner that day I get the world title. So, um, okay. But, yeah, we're always involved. I mean, I mean, we don't always have to hit pads every day. But, yep. but um, mentally and, and as a team, we're always together and we know where we got to be to get to where we got to go. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, that's me, Nez. Um so, one FC, you're headlining. Um, this will be your second fight this year. Um, how many Thanks. more fights have you got with one FC at the moment? Can Can you talk about that? And um, can we expect to see you after you knock Rob's head off? Maybe another fight this year, perhaps. Yeah. Um, the base con. I think. I mean, I don't know if I should be talking about it, but the base contracts for one FC is uh, six fights in two years. Okay. So that's about three fights in one year, yep. um, and these are guaranteed fights. So this is is great for fighters that's that's um, that's needing guaranteed fights. Um, and yeah, so by January I should be having another fight after La Cida. and yeah, so three fights a year. And I hope I fight somebody in the top three next fight. Cool. I mean, I asked I asked for it for for this fight, but um, they gave me La Cida. Don't don't ask me why, but. Just another, 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 another pay there. Nice. Yeah. Oh, so on that note, so you, so you actively got us. Um, you're asking for fights. Like you, you guaranteed the three. So you do you wait for like a ranking system where they say we match, we match you up number three and four, or you, you, you're calling out guys and trying to get those kind of fights there. Um, obviously, all the media and uh, calling people out and obviously causing attention will help. Um, um, but yeah, ultimately, is is you just need to sell fights, I believe. Like yeah. I think that's the difference between um, professional and amateur. Um, amateur is really the best of each division, just fights the best, and there's not much politics or media or attention involved. Um, and then when you get into professional, it turns into an entertainment business. So, yep. so that's when you do need to sell tickets and make sure people is watching, no matter how good you are. Yeah, yeah, a lot of people, um, oh, it's more and more going that way. Uh, you see mm. a lot of the guys in the UFC and in other organizations on the Twitter, you know, little jabs here, little jabs there, and, and they yeah. seem to, it grows grows the fight and grows that um, that per, fighter's personality, makes more people want to sure. see them. Yeah. yeah bro. Um, Rob is... Um, I mean, I've heard his name a few times, uh, quite a bit. You know, I haven't seen him fight. Um, and I know he's got a lot of fights under his belt. Well, maybe only a couple more than you, actually, professional. But there's a lot of footage for you to watch. Do you do you game plan for certain fighters and their skill sets? Or are you totally working on what you want to do and, and, and your plan in the cage? Um, yeah, so Rob Lacida, he's he's not an easy fighter. Even though he's coming off a couple aha losses, I mean, you can never count him out. Uh, I'm training for the best Rob Lacida that that I've seen and yep. and heard about as well. Um, I know I know he's a tough guy and he could grind you out. He's got a big overhand right. So um, I'm obviously I, I calculate all the high risk things and I, obviously I. I adapted to my game and I adapted to my timing and my different uh, certain strikes I would use and I would uh, sharpen it all up and then peak on fight night. Nice, nice. Yeah, that's, that's going to be good to see. Um, when, you, uh, when you're not fighting, well, when you've got a bit of spare time, what, what do you like to do? You hit the, 
at the karaoke bar maybe and, and have some you know <laughs> non-alcoholic drinks are you, are you a gamer um maybe just mm. movies and relaxing on the couch or what, what does ev10 get up to when he's not when he's not sharpening those tools uh, a couple of years ago, it used to be uh, computer games and uh, even iPhone games or whatnot. Um, recently, it's more so movies. Um, and I mean, here in Saigon, there's 4D cam, uh, 4D movies where you can rock in and the whole seat moves, and you can get like full-on lazy boys and stuff for like five bucks a movie. So what? it's it, it's <laughs> it's pretty accessible here, um, but. I don't know if you've been watching Kingdom. I've been, I've been. Oh, pretty... I heard about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So recently, it's uh, yeah. I've been, I've been religious on that. Yeah, I'll have to give that a shot. That's you're like the tenth person to tell me about Kingdom. Uh, I should have watched it <laughs> by now. That's the MMA um, TV series, right? Yeah, it's about a MMA gym called uh, Navy Street, but it's really about all the politics and uh, the mystics, you could say. Yeah. Um, that makes it all interesting. Oh man, yeah, that sounds great. Um, what about to watch fighting? Do you do you get enough of it in the gym, or do you watch the UFC or or any other promotions? Yeah, I mean, don't don't tell one FC, but um, I'm actually subscribed to Fight Pass, and um, I I yeah, I try to keep up to date with all the latest events, and even a lot of the nogi grappling. Um, yep. I'm really getting into that now. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm always upskilling. I try to. Always upskill no matter what. Yeah, yeah. The the no well, all of the grappling shows. Um, for me personally, I wasn't into it until um, Meta Morris got me really interested. But then even more so was the Eddie Bravo, and and I guess it's his set of rules and how how he always wants something to finish. Do you, do you watch EBI? Yeah. yeah, I believe EBI's rule set is definitely more um, more more suitable for today's competition. Yep. Um, like as as well, there's, this weekend there's a uh, one championship is hosting a grappling tournament in Macau, um, and that's that's got some big superstars on that, um, and I think it's going to be a great uh, drive in this in this uh, in this in Asia, yeah. and one day I'm sure it'll attract all the top guys to this tournament as well yeah. if they keep doing it. Sweet, yeah. Um, is that gi or no gi? Uh both, both. Oh, but okay. It's, uh, yeah, it's looking pretty packed. I mean, it, it looks stacked already. I mean, they only put up the notice about two weeks ago. And, um, yeah, so late notice, and it's looking like a packed event. So really, really excited. Me, me. What about yourself? Do you train in, in both, in the gi and no gi? Um, I try to train in the gi at least once a week, but it ends up being sometimes two weeks. But, like, um, I would say... I would say I'll do more nogi for sure. Yeah, that would be more more suited to, to MMA style, I guess. Is that right? Mm. Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, simulation is everything. Yeah. Um, so gi, gi can definitely stimulate stimulate your mind in different ways and it can make you look at different angles and stuff. But um, ultimately, you just need to get on top and smash them until they can't move, really. <laughs> So um so yeah so jujitsu is a little bit different. There's a lot of things that get neutralized, and especially in one FC when you have soccer kicks and whatnot. So sure. um so yeah so it's good to simulate what you would do in a fight rather than draw a bunch of um different things. Yeah sure. Um, looking ahead to to um the fights uh, next weekend, Diaz Connor is a huge one. Do you see that going any way other than how it went last time? <laughs> Uh, I mean, yeah, very likely that Connor is going to get choked out again. But he has—he's obviously got that chance. I mean, he's—he's he's got a lot of momentum, as usual. Um, but man, he's—he's he's barking up the wrong tree, man. The the <laughs> the Diaz brothers, man. You can't you like they ain't easy fights. So, no. I mean, I wish Connor all the best of luck. But like, um, I'm I'm on team. Diaz. Team Diaz, yeah, yeah. A lot of people on Team Diaz these days. A lot of Diaz um, fans and Connor fans are still strong on the on the internet, which is which is a bit of a surprise. Yeah, I heard the sales are not going so well for two hundred two, but I oh, mean, really? that's just a little. Yeah, apparently it hasn't sold out like all of his other events, but yeah, that's a bit weird. The uh, co-main event is uh, Rumble Johnson and Glover Teixeira. 
which should mm. be uh, barn burner. Do you have any thoughts on that fight? Uh, Rumble should definitely get the the knockout. I mean, I would like him to. I mean, he's he's been grinding for a while and he's looking strong, so yeah, yeah. it would be good to see him yeah. get on top. Yeah, they've both been they both been up there for a while, and then they both had a shot at the title. I guess we've got to see. Who's the man out of those two now? Um, when when can we expect to have a visit from you? Maybe after your win over Rob, you know, when you, when you get that bonus money or, or get that get that payday, um, can we expect a, another visit from Ev into Auckland? Oh yeah, I mean, we I've been back in Auckland four times last year, so um, after this fight, I mean, I mean, obviously, I'm going for that title shot and I would like to come home with a bonus um, I mean I'm, I'm 100% about that um, but yeah I'll be home for for the summer I'll be in Auckland till about January or February um, and from there I'm sure I'll get in a lot of time to catch up and even yeah. do some training if you're down um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah it, yeah it's cool I mean we, we, we're definitely gonna miss the summer I mean uh, the winter a little bit mm. yeah, so it's what... just an, what do you do? What's your um, when you get that when you get that win bonus? Is there something on your mind that you want? You know, some something you've been looking forward to buying yourself, shouting yourself. Uh, it's it's more so paying off <laughs> the training camp, <laughs> yeah, the true. training camp debt, and uh, all the other debt that you have accumulated over the time. Um, but normally, I would like to. Um, I always send some money back home and uh, make sure my dog is getting looked after. And I mean, essentials, essentials. Yeah. I mean, I haven't. Yeah. I mean, I would like to start bragging about uh, cars and all of that, but but like, um, yeah, I need to get. I need. <laughs> I need to pay for the essentials first. But yeah, I mean, obviously a car and uh, all that fancy stuff would be cool. Yeah, sweet man. So you. You probably don't need. I don't know where you are situated in Saigon, but are you almost? Um, Right next to your gym, are they, you know, are they? What do you, how do you um, maintain that? Are you coaching there, uh, you know, to to bring in a bit of dollars and and keep your gym, keep your training up to date? Yeah, so we stay in District Seven in Saigon. Yep. Um, so Saigon Sports Club is is a very um, diverse gym. It has um, all the facilities. It has uh, different trainers. It had uh, it has pretty much everything you you can do there. So um. I'm a MMA coach there, and I run oh, yeah. uh, the fight team operations, and I make sure everyone is um, pretty much training and looking busy and being happy about themselves. Um, but um, yeah, so the coaching definitely pays the bills while I'm here, um, and yeah, it's pretty close to where I stay, and it's all pretty. The lifestyle here is pretty, pretty straightforward. Yeah. Um, yeah. You recommend um, for maybe some up and coming fighters to perhaps put some money away and come over there and train, get some uh, some new experiences, perhaps. Yeah, for sure. I mean, Saigon Sports Club, like I said, has everything. So I yep. think it's very ideal for fight teams to do a little camp there. Hmm. Um, I mean, it has yeah it has everything you can imagine there. So so I think it's really perfect for small fight team camps. Um, yeah, I mean if. Definitely check out the facilities online first, and um, and plan a program accordingly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Dan Dan was on. I, I'm not sure if he was doing the interview himself because he posts a lot of media himself now. But he was talking about how he likes to try try different things. You know, move out of camp perhaps um, every now and again because he might feel like he's getting a bit stale. Do you? Do you prescribe to that kind of way? There's there's other guys that like my gym's my gym forever. You obviously yeah. change gyms, but would you want to change gyms too many times? Um, obviously not. But like, I mean, the f I mean, fighters. I mean, fighters. I mean, we're 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 not we're not loaded with money, you know. So we have to take coaching gigs, and especially if it's closer to where your other competitions and sponsors are. Then uh, you have to take the opportunities like that. But in saying so, like I mean, I, I, I mean, I represent Auckland MMA wherever I go, and um, I always fly my New Zealand and New Malaysian flags, and uh, my coach Hamish is always in my corners. So, so it's sort of leaving, but not leaving. Like we always have um, 
a, a, a close understanding and communication. So we yeah we know we know what's happening and we we know what we got to do. Nice, nice. Um, how long? Uh, can I ask how long's left on your one FC contract and and your immediate plans? You know, for the next year. Yeah. So this will be my second fight out of my six fights. Um, yeah. So my immediate plans is obviously to get the title shot. Um, I wanna I wanna be a world champion if I'm gonna stay in one FC. Um, and that's obviously where where everyone is working towards. But I feel like I'm overdue. I've got after Lucido will be my sixth win, sixth finish in in the cage. So I, I I'll, I'm coming right after that title shot. Um, immediate plans. Um, obviously, as the world champion, I would like to um, uh, obviously give back to to the community and everyone that has supported me first. Um, I don't know maybe do 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 a little trip of, um, I don't know, just training and seminars and yeah. uh, pretty much train as 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 many different places as I can to upskill. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, pretty much training is my <laughs> is my immediate plans. <laughs> More training. Yeah, yeah. So um, it sounds like if even if you weren't being even if you weren't in the one FC, even if you didn't have a contract, you'd still be training. You'd still be fighting anyway. That's that's oh, your life, you know. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I'll definitely be around the the, the scene. Like, I mean, it could be uh, riffing, it could be judging, uh, coaching, or even just being around. Um, I mean, MMA is where it's at. I mean, like Mark can't say is like it's the most honest way of living. Like, like you have to fight for your bread. You know, like this. There's no you can't you can't kiss ass and then get get money you know like you, you you fight for your money so that's I mean that's why we do what we do yeah for sure yeah you must I mean you're born with that a lot of people must be born with that there's a couple of athletes coming into it now because they see they see the opportunities there but but that's cool that you're um, you're fighter through and through you know um, mm. you mentioned Mark there Mark obviously been on the internet quite a bit lately his 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 um, Facebook is very entertaining he, he takes <laughs> he takes no shit on his own Facebook it's, it's great but um today yeah. today there was reports of uh, actual fighters union being put in place whether whether it's one thing putting it in place but getting getting it to work with the UFC is another different thing how would for that sure. work for someone like you uh, even if if, if that Fighters Union, you know, was in, say, in Asia, or is that something that would work yeah. to advantage, or are you signing that contract, you know, is already, you've decided that's what you're worth anyway? Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously the agreement of what you're worth for each fight, that's that's already an agreement that, that the fighter and the company has agreed to, yep. so I think it's the PFA, the Professional Fighters Association or something, yep. I mean, I think it's great that people are getting together to have a voice against certain promotions, um, I mean, they need to have a union where they, where they can express and represent themselves, um, I mean, I mean, in the sad world, I mean, people just see fighters as fighters and they don't want fighters to do anything else but fight and they just want fighters to be yes to fighting and they will use money as a leverage to uh, to get them fights and make them wait for the next fight and I mean that's that's yeah that's that's not cool like I mean like I mean I feel like I feel fighters deserve everything you know so so uh, it's, it's sad to see when certain promotions is um, treating fighters like 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 um, like fight uh, like those fight uh, those chickens that fight. <laughs> or like, or Rest, like, uh, oh yeah, cock fighting. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, there's, there needs to be more of a regulation, and um, fighters should have some rights and stuff when when they do fight. I mean, especially when something happens like your opponent t- uh, tests is positive. Um, yeah, especially when instances happen like that, fighters should have some sort of um, backup or or insurance or security to fall onto, rather than just saying, "Hey, we're the bigger, we're the bigger boss." So you, 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 yeah. So, so, yeah, so or, or fucking <laughs> out the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's, it's shit. It's shit to get thrown under the bus like Mike did, but like um, yeah, I hope it all goes well for him. Yeah, for sure. Um, that is something that they. I think it would be. Um, they got a two-year automatic ban now for for PEDs. But do you think there should also be something like when you miss weight, a 20%, maybe even a, a 50% for, for PED failure on that fight? Do you think that's fair? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that's very fair. I mean, yeah. um, I mean, I mean, weight cuts, like you said, is already 20%. So, so if you're taking extra PEDs, then that does make sense to go up to 50% or whatnot. Um, but yeah, I mean, that suits me really well because, I mean... I mean, all natural here. I mean, a lot of fighters I know that go natural. So, um, so yeah. I mean, we 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 we're, we're hunting these guys down one by one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's good. Bisbing was um, he tweeted today or something. He goes, "This is why, I, I, something like Usada is why I'm the champ now. Like, this is this is why I'm the champ now. All these guys were cheating, and and this is the result that you get." You, do you agree with that? I mean, it'd be a difficult question for you to answer, but I mean, Diaz says they're all on steroids. You know, is, is that true? Um, I mean, I've heard a lot of interviews and, and stories. Um, I mean, Charles Sinan would say that the the whole game is about not getting caught. Like, yep. like they, they would cheat as much as they like, but as long as they can, they they just can't get caught. So, um, I mean, I'm not surprised. I mean, I mean that's. Any any advantage to kind of get an edge nowadays, um, but yeah, I mean, if 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 you're one of those guys that do take it and don't get caught, and if you get caught, you better earn up to the responsibilities and pay up. Like, <laughs> I think yeah, I think it's simple as that. Like, don't yeah, don't 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 try to get ahead and then and then and then put yourself into a hole. Yeah, yeah, it's a difficult one. Um couple more questions before I let you go, bro. Um, thanks for your time, man. I know it's your busy, busy man, training, <laughs> coaching. Um, is um, is your is it your wife or your girlfriend? She's fighting now. Is how is she how is she going at the moment? Yeah, so my partner Tiet Nguyen. Um, yeah, I've been with her for ten years. Yeah. So so pretty much we just train and travel around the world and coach people. Um, she is cool. She she recently competed in the uh, uh, Vegas International uh, MMA Federation, yep. um, the amateur tournament. Um, that went well. I mean, like everything, yeah, everything was meant to be. She didn't come out with the gold medal, but I mean, all the experience and uh, training alongside all the rest of the New Zealand team um, was was definitely a great experience. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, yeah, New Zealand walked away with um, two gold medals and two bronze medals. So, um, yeah, so we're very happy with that. Yeah, yeah. We saw the results, man. It looked really cool. And, um, and someone's building something outside. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> Lucas was there, the other admin. Um, well, one of the other admins. He said that he was so impressed with the fights. He, he couldn't tell they mm. were amateur fights at all. You know, the talent was oh, just yeah. through the roof. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I feel that MF, the M- amateur tournament, is really the future of um, MMA. I mean, they unite over 50 countries and over 300 competitors to come around, um, and nations versus nations, and and uh, getting the government support behind them. Um, I think that's definitely the way to go, and eventually we might even see it in the Olympics. Um, but yeah, the tournament was sick. Like, I mean, the amateur fighters, they all came ready. They all came with their track suits. It was, it, was, it was like a movie, you know, like all, all these different squads just walking past True. the hotel. Yeah. Um, but, like, it's, it's super badass. Like, I mean, there was two or three other MMA events that same week. Yep. Um, but I would say the, the hunger and the and the desire to win and, and even some of the skills, I would say, was more impressive in the amateur show than in some of the professional shows I saw that week. I mean, yeah, it was that fight week, right, for, for UFC 200 and then and then the tough finale and then yeah. the fight night, right? And then all in between yeah. was, was the fights. Yeah, there was uh, yeah the tough finals and, uh, yeah, Eddie Alvarez getting his belt. Oh, right. and, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's a man, yeah, yeah, he's a man. That was cool. But, yeah, I mean, it was a busy week there in Vegas and uh, it, was, it, was, it was a good experience for Team New Zealand. 
me, Bo. Um, last question, man, and it's sort of a, a personal one. I, I, I'm, I like to ask, you know, fighters and, and successful people is how do you keep your your goals, you know, how do you keep moving forward to your goals and, and the motivation to, to, to do all these things that you need to do? It's not easy. And uh, you, mm. how do you keep that? Have you got any tricks you can share to, to achieve your goals and, and keep motivated? Um, I would say there's no tricks, there's no secrets, um, it's just hard work, dedication. Yeah. I would like to say that, I mean, but really, I, I wake up every day kind of asking me what you just asked me, um, but when it comes down to it is, is I would not prefer an office job to what I'm doing anyways. Yeah. I mean, I would not prefer anything else than what I'm doing already, so, so yeah, I, I live, I live, with no, I try to live with no regrets, so, Every every way, every day, and every way, I'm always trying to push forward and try to achieve something. And uh, I feel that martial arts was is the perfect path for me. So, so, so in those regards, I I know that I'm already fixed in this path. Um, in regards of motivation, um, I mean, it's it's yeah. I mean, it's definitely something deep within. Like I need, like I've just got this yeah desire to win, and I yep. need to yeah. So it's it's ongoing. Um, it adapts and changes with yep. time, but like, um, but yeah, you find new motivations every time. But I would say food is a very good motivation. <laughs> <laughs> how does how does that work? Like working out enough to have a big meal or something? Uh, wait, I'll show you something. So this is a good example. Uh, it, it was my birthday yesterday, so my friend, my CrossFit coach, got me a bunch of balloons and and a and a sack oh, full yeah. of chocolates. Nice. But for me to get into this bag of chocolates, I need to rip it all apart and destroy all the balloons. So, so, <laughs> so it's it's meant to it's meant for me to uh, finish my fight and then eat it. So, so that's that's a good motivation. True. So yeah, yeah. so I have to I have to I have to look at it every day until I finish my fight before I can have them. Nice. So um, so yeah, that's so that works in some ways. Yep, yep. That's dedication. Uh, yeah, that reward, <laughs> that reward staring you in the face. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I mean, psych psychology wise, I mean, behavior equals reward. So, so yeah. I mean, I would I would like to. I mean, people say they don't fight for money, but. Man, I fight for money. So, <laughs> so if anybody's <laughs> down, if anybody's down in my weight category, just give me a contract on the table with some money on it. I'll probably sign it. So, Sweet. so yeah, I'm a prize fighter. Cool, bro. Man, it's been awesome catching up with you again, bro. Um, it's been a long time since I've seen you your, and talked to you face to face. Um, have you got anything to say to any of your bros in, in New Zealand or, or anyone watching right now? Yeah, of course, man. Shout out to uh, Auckland MMA, all, all my brothers and sisters there, my coaches, uh, all my family, obviously. Um, but like, I mean, I mean, I'll see them soon enough. So, so yeah, we'll definitely be catching up soon. Awesome. Um, shout out to Saigon Sports Club and uh, all my Malaysian Mafia team that will be competing on the same night as me. I hope you guys are training hard. We're gonna we're gonna hold it down on second of September. Um, but yeah, just pretty much everybody that supports me and is tuning into my uh, fight, fight, uh, fight camp and my fight, obviously, um, and obviously yourself and uh, and JB for doing what you guys do. Uh, but yeah, um, everybody. Yeah. And how do we how do we follow you? Um, is it what's best, Facebook or Twitter or Instagram? All of them. Uh, yeah, so everything on Facebook, Instagram, um, just pop me a message anytime if you've got a question. Um, but yeah, I'm always on there. So cool. I'll get yeah. some links up, bro, so everyone can follow, man, and follow the journey, you know, see that training, and then see, him, see you rip his head off, bro. That's not, it, man. You're I not mean... going to change your name to Evil, are you? <laughs> nah. <laughs> uh, it's got I a know. good ring type. What's his, what's his <laughs> something? Oh, I can't oh, he's a, this one. He's, he, he used to be ruthless, but now he's a warrior of God, so I need to watch out, you know, like, that's, that's a big change. Yeah, yeah, that is a big change. He's, he's, uh, something's happened there. Yeah, I mean, 
with all respect, Rob Bashida has, has been around the sport a long time. He's beaten some big, big names. Um, he's got some impressive highlight reel um, finishes. So I'm not taking him lightly, but I mean, it's just a wrong fight, wrong time. So. Yeah. Mean, bro. Well, I look forward to seeing that, bro, and I uh, look forward to seeing you with the belt when you come back to NZ for a holiday. Oh, thank you so much, brother. Have a good, uh, good day. You too, bro. Thanks, man. Cheers, brother.